Today on Ross R Superstar, I'm going to talk about the Good Brothers right over here. And why are all the fan videos always in some weird bedroom? Like, I don't have anything here except, well, I don't have replica belts or anything, but I do have a really cool picture of sexy Samantha. So let's get out of this room and talk about the Good Brothers. So you remember me from a few years ago, I did the show on Periscope and uh, Periscope was this online app sharing video thing and your videos only lasted for 24 hours at a time, which I think saved a few people's lives because boy, there's some interesting natural videos for a while there. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to talk about some more topics this time um, as it has to do with wrestling. I think we live in the nexus of the coolest wrestling on the planet, so there's lots to talk about. Um, Periscope unfortunately didn't last for more than a few years. It was uh, its popularity waned as as does everything nowadays. So I'm standing here behind in front of Elks Hall actually. This is where it all began for the Good Brothers back in fall of 2014. And yeah, I know there's going to be fans that are saying, "Hey, Good Brothers Day debuted in uh, Richmond at Dropkicks for Kona," but no. Elks Hall here is where Nick Pesky and Mike Everest first discovered there is no I in teamwork. Fast forward almost three years and the Good Brothers are no more. As of June 2017 at ECCW fans bearing the weapons, Nick Pesky turned on his teammate Mike Everest and the results were horrible. Good Brothers are now done. They're finished. Kaput. That's the end. Unless you're this guy last week. So, fans like myself, hearts are broken. It was only fitting that I came here to the birthplace of the Good Brothers to say goodbye to the Good Brothers. And I will say goodbye right now. I'll just throw this over here at the dumpster. Goodbye, Good Brothers. You know, it really sucks though when you have to throw away a blue wrestling shirt because there's very few blue wrestling shirts out there. Most of them are all black and white. It's like I'm dr dressed up as a middle-aged goth guy most of the time. But fortunately, I have one more blue wrestling shirt and that's the women's ECCW champion right here. Let's look at the Good Brothers like the Brain Busters back in the 80s, famous tag team. See the guy on the left? That's Tully Blanchard. Now, Tully Blanchard reminds me of Nick Pesky, except, of course, Tully has a way cooler head of hair, and he doesn't have that creepy mustache. But, you know, Tully was smaller, and he kind of cheated a lot, and snuck around the ring. Now, the other guy, Arn Anderson, he's the muscles on the team. He was the powerhouse. He would just destroy the other wrestlers and win the belts for the team, really. Which Mike Evers pretty much did every single time. So does that leave Nick Pesky at a disadvantage, considering Mike Evers carried this tag team for over two years? I don't know. Uh, there's a few factors that we have to consider before we look at the big picture. Evolution. A few weeks ago, Mike Everest posted online that he is evolving. And that's what wrestlers do usually when they break up and go their separate ways from a tag team. Their personas like to evolve, keeping it fresh and exciting. I always thought Good Brothers were really fresh and exciting. They continue to evolve as well, but oh well. Let's take a look at each of the two guys and see where they're evolving. Now, I'm going to start with the easy one here. I'm going to start with... Mike Everest. Mike Everest has stated online that he's going to evolve into Fergie. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Now Nick Pesky's evolution is a little more complicated and complex. Take a look at his uh, recent picture from Abbotsford back at the end of June. He looks like somebody who's uh, cashed in on the Vegas Richter garage sale. A clue to Pesky's evolution is the name. Pesky is now wanted, wanting to be called Easy Rider Nick Pesky. Easy Rider Nick Pesky. Wasn't that a movie like 50 years ago? Yes, it was actually. It was back in 1969 that Dennis Hopper created the countercultural phenomenon that uh, starred Dennis Hopper and who else? Peter Fonda. They played these two guys and they uh, drove their motorcycles across America and they had all sorts of adventures, got into a lot of trouble, 
and uh, who are these two guys? One guy was named Billy, and I think that's who Nick Pesky is, and Billy had a best friend, and his name was Wyatt. So why is Nick Pesky embracing this 50-year-old movie to prove a point? I have no idea. It's kind of strange. It's an old movie. I mean, why does he call himself Casablanca Nick or Gone with the Wind Pesky? I mean, that's just as relevant, I think. Who watches this stuff? We're wrestling fans. We want to see Michael Bay movies and explosions and, and farting elephants and Jar Jar Binks. We don't want to see all these movies on AMC. What's going on here? But, you know, time will tell probably of what's going on. One thing's for sure, he's hanging out with two devious guys by the names of Xavier Galaxy and Alex Plexus. And when they're around, you know things are going to be bad. Fergie has his hands full. Um, he's going to have to deal with not only Nick Pesky now, but his buddies Galaxy and Plexus. And that's a big thing. I think, well... Fergie needs to uh, use his brain a little bit instead of his powerful muscles. And he is a smart guy. He has had a successful uh, solo career in the past, and he can do so again. I think he needs to think about it, how to get around these two other guys and get straight to Pesky. Both of them need to bring their A game, though. To summarize, both the brothers have to mix things up. Pesky, he's going to have to get some muscles. He has a good posse, but he needs, he needs some muscles in his posse. We've got a whole bunch of devious brains. That's not going to cut it against the juggernaut called Fergie. And Fergie, you're going to have to just figure out some new tactics to get around everything and to uh, get straight to Pesky. Both the guys have to bring their A-game, though. they got to get this fire in their eyes, like when Everest got the pre-CCW championship a year ago, or uh, when Pesky battled the, the Vegas Richter in the, a whole bunch of grudge matches. Those were amazing, and they, were, they, they brought some fury. Right now, they seem sort of wishy-washy, um, kind of missing their best friends, and, and that's not going to cut it. Who, uh, whoever rises to the top first is going to be the guy that uh, throws it all aside and says, I'm going to just destroy you, buddy. So before we say goodbye today, I have one more thing to tell you about Nick Pesky and the film Easy Rider. Nick Pesky's character, Billy, at the end of the movie, was brutally killed by this uh, pickup truck full of rednecks. They took their shotgun out and just went, and that was the end of Billy. So I have no idea... What Pesky wants to do with that? Who knows? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's why there's no more shows in Poco.